I'm moving right now. Yes, friends, hello and welcome to the Music Zone with Pitts Quattrone. We're broadcasting from the heart of the Green Mountains in Montpelier, Vermont. And the Music Zone is brought to you by our friends at Aromed Essentials, specializing in essential oils and diffusers, CBD tinctures, and pain-reducing topicals. Aromed is also a hemp flower bud dispensary, and they have the glassworks for smoking those buds. Located at 8 State Street in Montpelier, online at aramedessentials.com. Phone number 802-505-1405. Also making the show possible is our friends at Snapdragon Flower Farm, featuring produce, vegetable herb, and flower seedlings. Early season custom orders are welcome, as well as hanging baskets, potted flowers, tulips for Easter, and cut flowers, and you can do a cut your own option by appointment only. 521 Merle Road is the address for the Snapdragon Flower Farm in Danville, Vermont, online at snapflowerfarm.com, and by phone 802-748-2001. Well, joining us this time around on the Music Zone, a guy who plays in pretty much every band in central Vermont. <laughs> Guitarist extraordinaire and Montpelier's own D. Davis. Hey D, how are you? Great, Pitts. Thanks for having me on. This is quite the honor. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's, we have fun and we talk about music. We play a couple songs and, and the word gets out, the music gets out there. But uh, thanks for your time for stopping in today. Great. So for some folks who may not be familiar with you outside of the central Vermont area, because the show goes all over, tell us a little bit about your background. My background, uh, musically speaking, is uh, I moved to Vermont in 1997. I was living out in the Southwest. I also, before that, played in Philadelphia. Pretty much when I graduated college in 1992, I left and joined the circus. <laughs> so um, after New Mexico, I toured a little bit with the Dave, um, the um, the New Riders of the Purple Sage and the Dave Nelson Band. Really, yeah. I never knew that. That was a great experience. And then I moved back east. My family's from New Jersey, and um, a great story. I was I was on a plane about a month before that, and I was wondering if I should go up to the northwest or the northeast. And my mother called from Florida and said my uncle had a dream. Hmm. And he dreamt that I was going to meet somebody on that plane that was going to give me direction on where to go. Jeez. So sure enough, on the second flight back, I was visiting her in Florida. Um, I met um, a woman who had a little two-year-old who was giving me the eyes and, you know, just being really adorable. And I started talking to the mom. And she had a sister that sang in Santa Fe that I knew. And um, I told her my story. And she said, you belong in Burlington, Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so when I was driving up north and got to Colorado, could either go north of 25 or east towards, you know, 70. Jeez. Back eight, I, I, there was like a sleet storm came on all of a sudden, and I just head 70 east and went back to New Jersey, spent a little time there, and then headed up to Vermont in 1997, and I haven't left. Wow. And that's when my, my music career up here began in 1999. Mark um, Galvo. He was a well-known musician at the time, was running an open mic at the Cactus Cafe in Burlington. Mm -hmm. And he left to move out west, and he asked me to take over the, the open mic. And that's mm. when I started meeting um, all the musicians in Burlington. And then it just became um, one thing after another after that. And, and uh, that's when my music career here, I would have to say, began. Wow, so that's 1997-ish. Yes. Okay, cool. And uh, so musically, who are your influence? What, what influences you? I know you, you play a lot of different styles with a lot of different people. What's some of your favorites? Yeah, I like to call it the rainbow genre. The nice. The rainbow of genre. Um, my favorites growing up, I was honestly really into progressive rock. I was really into old Yes, mm. old Genesis. Mm -hmm. And that's what really got me in the guitar. 
Um, and then after that, I went right to the Grateful Dead and the Almond Brothers and really enjoyed, I knew how to read music at an early age, but I didn't really have the ear yet. And all that music taught me how to improv yeah. and really um, be flexible with music. And then I met a, a gentleman when I moved up here who was at the School of Berkeley, and he was the one that helped me out with all the theory. Oh. Like, he's like, do you know what chord you're playing? And I was like, no. And he was like, well, that's a sharp nine flat seven, you know, and that got me into learning all that. So over the years, that all kind of combined. And now it's just, I enjoy, I, that's why I play in a number of bands, because I enjoy <laughs> all the genres from classical guitar hmm. to blues guitar to jazz to swing. And um, I just, you know, if I have four shows during the week with four different bands, I don't get bored. <laughs> <laughs> and you stay busy working. And I stay busy working, <laughs> which, you know, as a musician, yeah. You have to find that niche. Yeah, you got to be flexible, man. Very flexible. <laughs> All right, so full-time musician you are. Yes, and I've been since I've been since two thousand and nine, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Okay, that's when I was able to um, quit the day job, and I I think at that time I was playing in about ten bands. Al Emery had knee surgery, so Star and Line needed a guitar player. I was playing with Myra Flynn, Bob Wagner, and the Book and Blues Band, and it just uh, Patrick Fitzsimmons needed a guitar player, and then I was just really wearing myself out thin. Yeah. And then I decided, let's keep it to three or four. <laughs> and uh, Sanity prevails. Yeah, I just kind of honed it in. I mean, you know, you can only be so all over the place for so long. So. All right, well, fast forwarding to, to uh, now. Yes. Um, recently, you uh, wrote a song and submitted it to help with a, a big uh, collaborative collection of songs, which I put my hat in the ring as well. Yes. But tell us about the song and tell us about, first of all, what is the collection and uh, who is it for? It's in memory of Rachel Bissex, who is a well-known uh, singer-songwriter uh, in the folk scene. In Vermont, and I always heard about her ever since I moved here. You mm -hmm. know, I was always very curious about her. I have to say I didn't get to see her much or hear much of her music, but her name was always present in mm -hmm. any of the music circles I was in and out of. Mm -hmm. And I, I love writing folk music and being a part of folk music, but I have to say it hasn't been uh, prominent in my life. But I got a message from Lynn uh, Cordozo, and um, she said, if you're interested, we're having this, you know, collection of artists submitting songs in, in memory of her and uh, you know they have a it's it's great because during a pandemic you know they have uh, gig money so if you know they're going to select I think 25 Vermont artists that they are going to um, donate $100 to for their submission of the song so it got me going when I got the message and I hadn't written a song all year I've been busy with my seven-year-old the teaching him music and he knows everything <laughs> and helping him with school because he's in virtual school but um, as it was getting closer to the date, the deadline's April 1st, about a week ago, I had been working on a song on and off for the last few months, and it's called Unconditional Love. I mean, during this time, for, for me, my family has gotten a lot closer. There's been a lot of positive things from this pandemic for me personally. Good. Um, I do miss hugging people, and I miss a lot of the things, but yeah. in a positive retrospect, it's really done um, some wonderful things for me and my family, and uh, I just sat down a few days ago and it finally came together and right. I just recorded it on my phone and submitted it. So coming here to join you on the show it was like out of the thousand things I could do, I was like, I think I'll share <laughs> this song today because it's fresh. It's right out of the oven. And uh, there might be one word flub, so excuse me, but, um, you know, we do our best when we don't rehearse. So All right. So yeah. this is Unconditional Love by D. Davis here on The Music Zone. There it was Up above Is this love All around me
stars are bright through the night I just might stand inside me when it rains restore your love light even more there's a place for us with unconditional love There's a faith in us where love is rising up and the change played a love life rearranged all inside me. There it was. Up above Is this love All around me D. Davis on the Music Zone It's his original tune Unconditional Love Part of the Rachel Bissick's a collection of songs that is happening right now online. And uh, so, D, moving a little bit back uh, through the pandemic early on, middle of that, uh, everyone's getting creative as far as like, hey, how do we earn some money because live gigs are just not happening. So uh, everyone goes online, does the virtual concert thing, <laughs> that type of live in your living room. But I have to tell you, you are one of the most creative online artists I've seen because it's not just like Friday night at 8 o'clock, Dee's going to play a concert. No, it's I got a list of things that you've done online and almost on a regular basis, and I think they're fantastic. And there, we have morning music with Dee Davis, lullaby songs, classical guitars in your pajamas. Uh, outside of your house on St. Patrick's Day, a collection of songs. I mean, this is beautiful stuff. I guess it's like you have to adapt and, and do, make do for yourself. My son once dubbed the name, a great name for a band he said would be Pretty Little Dress Rehearsal. Ooh. So we kind of see life like that. And so I never announced the shows. You know, at seven o'clock and on Tuesday, you know, right. I just, when the feeling comes and my son's very helpful with that too. Like he'll come downstairs. I'll show him this Wawa pedal. I haven't taken out of the closet in 10 years and he'll plug it in and be like, we got to do a live stream right now. <laughs> and I'd be like, well, we have nothing rehearsed. And he's like, well, what would Pete Townsend say? And so I'm like, hit the go button, hit the go button. <laughs> and so he's very helpful with that. But I, I, that's how I kind of live my life. I mean, anybody that plays music with me in any of the bands, they know me well for this. I and I also sometimes like purposely book shows with somebody, you know, unrehearsed. I tried to book one with you. Yeah. Um, and I love booking shows unrehearsed and just letting that happen. Cool. And you know, like I said before, you take a risk. You know, you might bomb some, but to me, if you bomb or you hit a wrong note, that to me sets up this thing that Dwayne. What happened with Dwayne Allman a lot or other musicians I love, where they they come back stronger. Garcia. Garcia, exactly. And you come back stronger from that flub. And so I like putting 
music in the moment yeah and letting it breathe and you know be this raw mm -hmm. um unpredictable thing because I like both things about music, the science and the mathematics of it, and also the mystery and the unknown. Mm. And I think when you can blend those two and have a relationship with those two, that's where the magic is. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you have to take a risk to explore or find something incredible. Exactly. It may not work every time, but when it does, man, that is absolute magic. Exactly. You, you know it. <laughs> We're preaching to the choir for each other here. But it's cool. We got that with us. For me, my experience was the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Those guys, they taught me how to listen adventurously. Exactly. First. And then from there, you build. Exactly. So oh, that's so cool. So you mentioned your son Flynn is yeah. his name. He's seven years old. Seven years old. Okay, and there's something else I have here <laughs> on your list of virtual events. You know, Flynn and Dee's music school. Yes, that might be something that might be in the works. I mean, I, I do teach music, and I, I consider myself more of a music teacher than a guitar teacher. I play every instrument. So I just try to... Guitar is my main instrument, but I try to teach music in a way where let's let's learn how to read it first let's learn what the notes mean let's learn what all that means because then you can teach yourself it's like that old saying you know do, do you want me to teach you how to fish and do you want to learn how to fish by yourself you know yeah. and be able to catch your own fish so with flynn he's my it's not that it's an experiment but for the first seven years i let him just play yeah and, and feel it as he says good but then i'm teaching him now how to read notes and you know i get a lot of arguments and protests but you know it's teaching me how to teach people like that because i have a few six seven year olds and mm. they like to play like you know let's see how much i can get away with this before he <laughs> you know gets on my case so with my son he's now learning how to read the music and now learning tempo and and now it's that you know approach of doing both, like I said before, and he's, he's getting it. So now I think hmm. with the pandemic, it's a little hard, but there might be some opportunities for me now to get kids together and teach them how to play together. Excellent. And also maybe get the parents involved nice. and have the parents and the kids playing together. Um, it's not as difficult as you think. I just gifted my wife a cello for Christmas because she always dreamed of playing the cello and it's like, well, it's not too late. Yeah. And so she's just learning how to bow those open strings while we're playing you know, you are my sunshine, or let me call you sweetheart, any of the wonderful old songs that are only three chords, and she's getting it, you know, and that's where it starts. So beautiful. even though I teach individually, I think I might try to start moving into teaching uh, people how to play together hmm. and making that part of, you know, a music school. Nice. Um, so it's everything's in the making. Like you said, we're trying to get creative during this time. And, you know, I don't know if things are going to be safe next fall or when, you know, we... And if we can't be indoors, I'm going to have to find a way maybe to teach virtually how people can play together. Yeah. Yeah. How to sync up on rhythm, how to sync up on timing. Yeah. yeah. It, it, to me, it sounds like it's benefiting everyone, including you, the teacher. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to jump over to the music studio now and uh, tell us what song we're going to hear. Ah. Uh, I was really happy to pick this. So Pitts is joining me on this, on, on the didgeridoo, and... Um, this is a song in the key of D. This is the first song off my album, Hopeful, which is the beautiful painted cover right here uh, by Brooke Monty of Burlington. It's an instrumental album I did with Jody Peterson here at Cliff House oh, cool. Studio. <laughs> we had a nice barter. I painted most of her closets and a couple of her rooms, and she <laughs> let me record all this music in her studio. Beautiful. She did a wonderful job, and uh, it's 11 songs. It's all instrumental, but besides the last one. So I chose the first instrumental because... D goes well with the D didgeridoo. And uh, I wrote this song for my mom when she um, was about the last week or two of her life. And mm. I was spending time with her. I was at my uncle's in New Jersey overlooking the river and the ocean. And he had like a little perch really up high. And I was just up there by myself. And the song like came through me. Nice. Kind of a thing. And then luckily I remembered it. And then it's, it's my paying homage to my beautiful wonderful mom who really taught me so many things as all moms do yeah and uh it was my tribute and and the title of the song is called homage this is homage d davis on the music zone with pitts quattrone <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back to the Music Zone with Pitts Quattrone. D. Davis is uh, the guest today. Beautiful song there. Homage for his mom with yours truly on didgeridoo. Seemed to work nicely with that combination. Yeah, tour's coming up soon. <laughs> we'll just do All that right. song for like an hour. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> I'm in. You, you book the gig, I'll be there. I'm in, homage. All right, so D. Davis, guitarist in the Montpelier area. Uh, before we go any further, I want to know, tell people how they can get in touch with you, how they can hear your music, where do they find you? Okay, so D. Davis, uh, I'm on Facebook. I, I recently got on Facebook, um, and it's D-E-E -E on Facebook because I couldn't use the letter. Ah. But you also see just D. Davis, the letter. Um, and then I'm noticing there's a lot of D. Davises out there. So I had to use D.S. Davis for like my Gmail, DS, DS Davis Music at gmail.com. Um, so those are the ways you can get me. I had a website for a while, but it just wasn't working out for me. For, but I think um, talking to you about the music school and some other ideas I have, I might um, invest in something like that. But for right now, you can find me on social media as D.E.E. -E Davis okay. or any of the wonderful bands I play in, which is Red Hot Juba, The Lark Spurs, and Cookies Hot Club. You can all find them online. We all have websites just by typing in the band name. Okay, say those bands again. Yep, the bands are Red Hot Juba, Cookies Hot Club, and The Lark Spurs. Okay, cool. All with D. Davis on guitar. And various, or, and various other instruments, yes. <laughs> Excellent. That sounds good. And uh, so, uh, real quick, we're almost out of time, but if you can describe what are you doing this summer? You have some plans for the next few months. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. Even last summer during the pandemic, I know a lot of people like Tom Moog and Johnson and Moog's Place in Morrisville and uh, the Zen Barn and all these clubs that have an outdoor um you know, a patio or something. Yeah, where we can have live music. So I was able to actually still play live music, you know, four to five gigs last summer. And already everything's booking up for this summer. So, wow. And, you know, I'd be more than happy to play at the end of your driveway. I can come serenade. I can come play classical guitar. I'm open to anything. But um, yeah, all the bands <laughs> have been booking lots of concerts on the green from Brandon to Middlesex um, and, and any club that has an outdoor um, option like Moog's Joint or the Zen Barn or um, a few others that, of course, I can't think of right now. Um, so I'll be playing with Red Hot Juba, or Mar Martell's is another one in Jeffersonville. I'll be playing with Red Hot Juba, the Larkspurs, and Cookies Hot Club at all these venues. If you want to see what's going on, just check out their websites, and all the dates will be there. Okay, so folks can find you easily. Yes, <laughs> and you can just, yeah, just give me a call or just message me on that. That thing called Facebook. I think there's something called Instagram too. I've been hearing about this thing, this new thing called Instagram. So uh, maybe I'll figure out how to use that at some time. We'll see. I actually think it's Instagram. Oh, it is? Okay. <laughs> and you can always use the good old fashioned telepathy. I'm always there for you telepathically. Tuning so, in. <laughs> any time of the week you want to have a word, we can, uh, we can tune in with each other. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, D. Davis, I want to thank you again for stopping by. It's been a wonderful conversation and great playing music with you and just thanks for coming by the music zone thanks Pitts. you got it i really appreciate it all right friends that wraps it up for today but i want to mention our sponsor once again aromed essentials in downtown montpelier specializing in cbd tinctures and pain reducing topicals essential oils and diffusers aromed is also a hemp flower bud dispensary and they have the glass works for smoking those buds. 8 State Street is the address, downtown Montpelier, online at aromedessentials.com. And by phone, 802-505-1405. And please mention to Aramed Essentials, as well as our friends at Snapdragon Flower Farm in Danville, that you heard about them right here on the Music Zone with Pitts Quattrone. Friends, that is it for this week, this program, and this episode. We will talk with you next month. Thank you for tuning in, and take care. I'm moving right now.